Okay. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, so for everybody, I guess, who was here for their previous talk and isn't like too horrified at the thought of me talking about threads again, um, <laughs> I'm going to be talking about uh, things that were frustrating and annoying as I was using multi-threading in the last year. And I know this talk uh, title sounds like this is just going to, be, going to be a complaint fest, but actually I think the message of the talk is really hopeful because most of my complaints have been fixed in recent releases, which Gabriel will be talking about later. Hooray! Um, so definitely stay tuned for his talk, uh, which I believe is after lunch. Um, so first, I just also want to start off talking about all the things that are really good about Julia Threads. Um, again, we have a lot of really amazing features that I think are actually very easy to take for granted, especially the fact that we, like, we do have dynamic and nested threading, whoops, and it mostly just works. Uh, like, sure, there's some pain points, but overall, it actually mostly works very well. We have nice support for atomic operations, including for like pretty arbitrary types. Working with stuff like channels uh, helps promote good designs, and also the fact that channels by default are thread safe is very protective for programmers like me who are just kind of running around like a bull in a china shop, destroying everything. Um, we don't have to use macros to do everything, so if anybody here is an OpenMP user, um, of course, OpenMP is also wonderful, but it's nice that we have uh, some good constructs that don't involve like using funky macro programming to get what we want done. Um, and we also have had good enough coarse graining in threaded loops to protect us from some of the task overhead for a long time, which is awesome. Um, so I think especially uh, in comparison to some other languages, uh, you know, Julia's threading is in a really good place right now, um, and there's still room to grow, but I just want to start off by saying, actually, I think the threading situation is pretty good, um, which is why when th annoying things happen, they're like extra annoying. Uh, how could this happen to me? Um, so there are a few pain points. Um, one of the main ones, I think, uh, which also Kieran was mentioning, is schedule thrashing. So uh, I um, have a lot of weird use cases where I want to create like hundreds of thousands of tasks. Um, and even there, the coarse graining like can help a lot, but a lot of them can be relatively short-lived, and this is like kind of the nightmare scenario for the scheduler because you have some overhead, of course, involved in setting up a task and then reaping it later, uh, and we then have to schedule those tasks in an efficient way. And there's also not that much information I can give the scheduler of like, oh, you should try and run this one and then this one and then this one. Um, and if you're me, it's easy to write naive code that experiences this anti-pattern. Obviously, there's more sophisticated things you can do, but it can be relatively easy to write something that runs decently on like my crappy little laptop here, but when I got onto an actual compute node, the performance is not as good as I might hope. Um, so again, this has improved now that we've had naive coarse graining since like 1.8, but uh, there's still some room for improvement, which we'll probably hear about later, and the task overhead can become really frustrating if you have like millions of loop iterations that you want to thread over or something like that. Um, and again, uh, calling back to earlier, maybe the answer is just don't do that, but for now, people like me are still trying to do it, and the overhead is kind of annoying. Okay, uh, another maybe anti-pattern that people often encounter, people being me, is I have some sort of weird nested loop like this, and I don't necessarily know what the size of the loop is gonna be when I start running it, and um, I wanna figure out like what's the most efficient place to like insert like two levels of dynamic threading or something like that. This can be hard to figure out, obviously, if like I don't know what the loop size is um, before runtime, and one solution, solution, is to just write like 14 different versions of this with like all the combinations of where the at threads macro could go and then just dispatch to them with some decision tree. But that's kind of annoying. Um, it would be nice if we had a good way to figure out like, hey, you know, this inner, like the middle loop is much bigger, so prioritize scheduling that first um, or something like that. Uh, and it's just not that obvious necessarily like where exactly is a good place to put the nested threading macro, so. Um, this again, I understand, is like also a pretty hard problem because like how do you, how do you as the Julia core language developer like figure out what the person intended or like which loop really makes sense to dispatch over? But it would be nice if there were a way to um, either specify like the maximum number of workers or give Julia some hints about which loop should prioritize actually having multiple tasks spawned or which could be combined into one task. Um, and there's other things, of course, we could do. We can, can try and collapse everything into one mega loop um, and then back compute the other indices. This is also an option. It's like kind of a C-like approach, I guess. But it would be great if the threading scheduler were a little more accommodating um, of people like me with this weird loop pattern. Um, cool. Uh, this, this may be a minor complaint, but I'm like a coverage sicko. 
Uh, I want to see coverage get to 100%. And I, this also, I'm very willing to accept that this might be a problem with the Julia coverage system. But you can see in this screen cap I took from CodeCov that the end of the threading block is not covered, and it should be, because like all the like the rest of the threading block was covered. And in several files, I have like several seven missing lines, but they're not missing. They were touched. So I would like, I don't know, the threading people to talk. Okay, well, then talk to Claire. I don't know, but somebody needs to fix this because it's hurting my heart. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's because it's because of macro semantics, but the point is my 100% coverage badge is being affected. Um, <laughs> and my mental health is suffering, so just keep that in mind. Um, Threads 4 has a lot of sharp edges. Again, maybe the answer is, well, don't use it. Um, that's the answer Ray gave me when I asked her about it. Uh, <laughs> But we also talk about it a lot in base threading documentation and the manual. So it would be nice if we either didn't talk about it so much as a recommended option or made it nicer. An example is like you can't use nested for loops, which again like may not be really Threads' fault, but it's kind of odd that this doesn't work and you have to split it among two loops, even if you know N and M when you arrive at like this macro. Um, and I just want to keep time for questions, so I'll keep it moving. Um, but things are getting better. I guess that's what I wanted to end with. You know, start off with some nice things and end with some th nice things. Again, I really want to probably Gabriel's talk because he's going to give an in-depth discussion about how much Threads has improved, including the overhead and scheduler issues I mentioned. Um, and also, one other great thing about the Julia community is that we have this awesome ecosystem of threading packages um, that you can try out if you think Threads 4 is not that great. So Mason is going to talk about that in a little bit. Definitely stay for that. And then, of course, Kieran also mentioned task groups. Uh, and one thing that, of course, like we're all working on this together, means is that we can take good ideas from these other packages and incorporate them into base as we go. Um, and also, uh, I can bug Claire about facing the lowering issue for my coverage statistics. Oh, so that was uh, the last slide. Um, so I guess we have time for a few questions. And um, Mason, you're next, right? Do you want to come set up? Let's give the speaker a round of applause and questions.